So, uh, how many of you guys are fans of uh, science? You guys like science out there? I like science. Uh, and I, I found uh, some encouraging and interesting science news that I thought I would share with you today. Uh, because it's interesting. I always love to, you know, when they do studies on things or they, they reveal new facts about something that we didn't know before through, you know, um, empirical testing and, and you know, it's the, uh, science. It's science. Science is awesome. Well, here's something from uh, Sunny Skies. Physicist wins IG Nobel Prize for study on whether cats should be classified as liquids or solids. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> there you have it. I've always wondered this myself, personally. I, I never knew. Uh, the IG Nobel Prizes are awarded every year by Improbable Research, an organization devoted to science and humor. The goal is to highlight scientific studies that first make people laugh, then think. And uh, I, I, are you, I hope that you saw, I think the, I'm going to throw up a couple of pictures that he took, the researcher took to help prove his point. They're hilarious. Um, a ceremony is held every year at Harvard University. Uh, Mark Antoine Fardin was awarded the IG Nobel Prize in Physics for his research paper on the rheology of cats. Quote, at the center of the definition of a liquid is an action. A material must be able to modify its form to fit within a container, Farden said. Quote, if we take cats uh, as our example, the fact that they can adapt their shape to their container if we give them enough time. Cats are thus liquids if we give them time to become liquid. <laughs> um, his official research paper, Farden, uh, discusses many factors, including relaxation time, experimental time, the type of container, and the cat's degree of stress. The conclusion, cats can be either liquid or solid, depending on the circumstances. Farden reported in the uh, Rheology Bulletin in 2014, and apparently this year now he's won a, uh, an IG Nobel Prize from this organization. I love to hear... I mean, science is great. I, I, I love science. I... I I think without science, this, well, we'd still be back in the dark ages putting leeches on people. I mean, well, actually, you'd be back where seems like uh, some of the progressives want to send us, you know, it was back to the dark ages. But, but at this point, um, no, I, I loved it. I, I like it when people can have fun with science, too. I mean, it doesn't always have to be taken absolutely literally and absolutely seriously all the time. It's fun when you can just take a scientific idea and just play around with it for fun and, uh, and just see where it goes and what happens with it. Uh, this perfect example. I didn't even know that there was, uh, this kind of award show and, and, and Harvard university too. I had no idea that they did this every year. Uh, this is something that, um, I watched. They had a link to the video where they played the whole thing. They played the whole award ceremony. And there were some really, really crazy things that they gave people awards for, but they were fun. They were fun and funny. Um, there's a lot of people out there that, that consider science to be a religion. Uh, and it's usually religious people that do that. It's like, well, science is just another religion. It's like, no, science is religion. Like, off is a TV channel. It, it just, no, it, that's not the way it works. But I would love to see if religion would sometimes like do the same thing that science is not afraid to do, which is to sometimes make fun of itself. Science does that because I think they know uh, on the whole that, you know, when they're doing studies and science gets things wrong sometimes, but that's the great thing about science is it's adaptable. Um, we don't stick to things that we learned, you know, 2000 years ago. And then continue to believe the same thing, no matter what new evidence comes up. We change our minds to go with what new evidence we have, which is why science is always refining itself and it's always getting more and more accurate. Uh, whereas religion does not do that. In fact, they do the opposite. They're kind of the opposite of science. They, they take you know, ideas from 2,000 years ago, and no matter what new evidence is piled onto it, they ignore it. They have to. Because if they didn't, then it would be science and not religion. So um, that's my comparison between science and religion for today. 
But uh, I just, I thought that you guys might appreciate the fact that um, cats apparently can either be liquid or solid. I, I honestly, I, I've never, I think they're aliens. I've always thought cats were aliens. They're just, I've never understood the way they are. It's like they, they can, one minute they're rubbing around your leg and purring, and then they'll look at you, claw your leg, and then run away. And it's like, well, I, you know, earth creatures don't do that. They're either mean the whole time or they're friendly the whole time. They, they don't just do things like that for no reason. And so I think they're from a different planet. They're from the planet Catania. I don't know. Um, maybe they're actually, maybe they're inbred Pokemon. I have no idea what they are. But uh, whatever cats are, I definitely think that more research needs to go into cats to find out what the fuck they even are.